Hey everybody, how's it going? Chiago here and welcome to another episode of the podcast. How have you been? Hope you're doing well. And today we are going to talk about movies and TV series. Yes. Before we get started though, if you're new here, I created this channel and podcast to help intermediate and advanced learners of English polish their skills so you can communicate with more confidence, more accuracy, more clarity, and of course, more awareness. So if this sounds like something you want for yourself and your English, subscribe to the channel if you are on YouTube or follow the show if you are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any other podcasting platform, because every week there are new episodes here on the podcast. All right. So without further ado, guys, let's talk about learning English with movies and TV series. In this episode, I'm going to share with you my personal method, the method that I used back when I was learning English more intentionally many years ago to improve my communication skills, my fluency in English. All right. Before I actually present to you the, the method itself, let's talk a little bit about why. Why learn English with movies and TV series? Believe it or not, I have heard from some students in the past things like, oh, Chago, I know movies and TV series are nice, but I don't like them very much. I don't have the patience to sit down in front of the TV and watch uh, something for a long time. I prefer to be out of the house, you know, doing something more physical, some, something more active. I have heard things of that nature. But look, guys, uh, I understand that. But what I'm going to be proposing in today's episode is only going to take you a few minutes of your day. Just a few minutes of your day, and you will see that it's going to help you tremendously in your English development. All right? So let's talk a little bit about why. Why learn English with movies and TV series? Let me give you some reasons. First of all, it gives you the chance to observe native speakers using the language in various situations. Think about it. When you watch a TV series, you get to see firsthand native speakers of English using the language to communicate many things in many situations. This is almost, almost, okay? Almost like traveling abroad. Not the same, I know, but it is almost a similar experience because when you travel abroad, you get to observe native speakers in real life using the language for many purposes. If you don't have the opportunity to travel yet, if you are in your home country, I think the best way for you to simulate a little bit, at least a little bit of that experience of being abroad is through videos through movies and TV series, because with them, you also get to see native speakers using the language in many different situations. Now, let me be clear again, it is not the same thing. If you have the opportunity to go abroad and spend some time there, by all means, do it, because not only is that experience going to help you in your language development, but also uh, in terms of personality, personally speaking, because you also get to be in touch with the culture more closely, okay? So I know that being abroad for a few months or for a few years is an invaluable experience, but a great way for you to simulate a little bit of that experience is by watching movies and TV series regularly at home, okay? So this is one reason why you should employ movies and TV series more often in your study routine. Another reason is there are many genres available out there. A movie genre or a TV series genre is the style, the type, like action, drama, comedy. These are genres, okay? And each genre can help you with something specific when it comes to your English. For example, imagine we're watching a, a TV series like House, for example, or uh, Grey's Anatomy. You know, that depict doctors uh, in many everyday situations at a hospital. Chances are you will be in touch with vocabulary, with expressions, with language that is used within the medical context. So 
If you are a medical student, for example, series like that can help you uh, improve your vocabulary in that area. Or, for example, imagine you watch an action movie or a cop type of movie, you know, something, something that deals with crime, investigation. You will learn more jargon, more specific words that are often used in that context, or at least have an idea of what kind of language is used in that context. Comedies are great, in my opinion, for general English, because comedies, sitcoms, for example, um, depict people in many situations. You, you get to see people at the restaurant having a meal, at home with their friends or family, at work, traveling. So usually comedy movies, you know, comedies or TV series that are comedies, the sitcoms, like Friends, Two and a Half Men, The Big Bang Theory, these kinds of shows, uh, they are great for general English. And also we have the epic movies and epic TV series, like Game of Thrones, for example, or like I've done the, the lesson here on my channel recently, Braveheart, the movie here, or Gladiator. You know, these movies, epic stuff, can teach you some maybe old-fashioned English old-fashioned vocabulary, and even more formal vocabulary, all right? So this is another reason why you should take advantage of movies and TV series, because each genre can help you with different aspects of English, okay? Another reason, obvious, uh, obviously, right, is you get to learn and hear how native speakers pronounce individual words and full sentences. So the great thing about movies and TV series is that you get to pause the video, you get to come back and play back a certain clip, a certain passage, and you get to listen to how a native speaker pronounces a certain segment of language over and over and over again. This is great Practice for your listening skills and also for your pronunciation skills. If you also imitate, you practice imitating the sounds you hear, emulating as close as possible what you hear. All right. So it's great for pronunciation work and listening work as well. And it's also easier to contextualize vocabulary because you have the visuals. When you watch a movie or TV series, you have the visual element there in front of you. So looking at the scene, observing what's happening with the characters, what the situation is, helps you better contextualize the language that you are observing there, that you are studying, okay? So you get to see exactly in what possible context or situation that word, that phrase could be used. All right. And finally, it's fun. Of course, it's fun. All right. It's a fun way for you to improve your English, for you to practice your English. Even if you're not a huge fan of movies and TV series for whatever reason, I'm sure that even sitting down for a little bit and Improving your English, practicing your English with them will be enjoyable for you, even if just for a few minutes, all right? So these are some reasons why I believe you should incorporate movies and TV series in English more and more in your study routine, okay? Now, let's talk about using them for English learning purposes. I think it's very important to talk about the difference between Active learning and passive learning, or also the active approach to learning versus the passive approach to learning. I get the feeling that most people, most learners, they consume movies and TV series passively most of the time. And what does that look like? Well, basically, is when you sit down in front of a computer with your phone in your hand or in front of a TV. And you simply watch the video, the movie, the TV series in English. Great. Audio in English, subtitles in English, but you just watch it. That's it. This is a more passive way of consuming English content. 
This is great. Don't get me wrong. It's better than nothing. Okay? But if you really want to take your English to the next level, what I want to propose today in this episode is combine that passive consumption with more active learning moment. Okay? So you can approach a movie, for example, from two different angles. The first angle is I want to have fun. I want to have fun. I want to enjoy myself. I want to relax a little bit. And I'm going to watch something in English just to keep the contact with the language. That's okay. That's one approach. But the second approach is, okay, I'm going to use this movie, this episode, to actually study the language with. Okay? I'm going to use it to study. So it's one thing for you to watch for fun. It's another thing for you to watch to study. Probably you will have fun also uh, using the movie to study, but that's not your focus. You see, your focus is on studying with the clip, learning with the clip. So it's really important that you have these two approaches very clearly differentiated in your mind. All right. So in this episode, I want to present to you my personal method on how I actively used movies and TV series to learn to study the language. So I want to start by saying that quality and frequency are much more important than quantity, meaning that I am not talking about watching a whole movie to study with it or a whole episode. What I propose here is dedicate between five and 15 minutes per day to learn English actively with movies and TV series. Just five to 15 minutes. It could be a five minute clip of a TV show, a 10 minute clip or a 15 minute clip if you have more time. The truth is actually that even a one minute clip could generate a 30 minute study session or even a one hour long session, depending on the kind of language that is used in that one minute, the amount of dialogue there is, and how much you get out of it, you could easily spend 30 minutes or even one hour just dissecting, just learning and studying with a one minute clip. Okay, so I'm not saying that you should watch the whole movie or the whole episode. It's just a short clip or a short scene, okay? That's the first big point here. Now let's talk about the actual method. I wanna start with the mindset, the mindset. Your mindset should be to extract at least one thing from the clip you're working with. That should be your mindset. For every clip of something you watch, you should extract at least one thing one big idea, one insight, one piece of vocabulary, one way of pronouncing something for your English, okay? If you don't extract at least one takeaway or one thing for your English, each time you watch a video, you are not employing the active approach. You are not being active enough. This is an indication that you are being passive. So try again. You got to extract at least one thing. And if after trying it again, you still can't extract anything from that clip, you go like, you know, I don't know. I don't learn. I'm not learning anything from this clip. There's no takeaway here. Nothing. Well, change the clip. Maybe that clip you're working with sucks. All right. It's not ideal for your English study session. So change the clip. Watch another movie or another TV series. Okay, but you got to extract at least one thing every time you sit down to study English with a movie or a TV series clip. All right. Let me give you some examples of goals that you could create for your study sessions. Listen, I'm going to watch a video for 15 minutes with subtitles in English. And I'm going to learn two new words from this clip. You see, it's concrete, 
It's specific, right? I'm going to watch a video. How long? For 15 minutes. How am I going to watch it with subtitles in English? And what am I going to learn or what am I hoping to learn with this clip? Two new words. You see? Here's another example. I'm going to test my listening skills by watching a short clip without subtitles and taking note of what I understand. I'll watch at least five times without subtitles. Then I'll watch it one last time with subtitles to check how much of the clip I understood. Again, you see how specific this goal is. What am I going to work on with this clip today? My listening skills. How am I going to watch this clip five times without subtitles? Because I'm focusing on improving my listening skills. What else? I'm going to be taking notes as I watch and listen to that clip. And at the end, I will watch it one last time, but this time with the subtitles, to compare the subtitles with my notes and see how much of the clip without subtitles I actually got or understood. You see, so aside from having this mindset of, okay, I'm going to extract at least one thing from this clip today, make sure you create a goal for your study session. Every time you sit down to work with a movie or TV series clip, okay, what do I hope to achieve or accomplish with this session? All right? But of, but of course, make sure your goals are realistic, okay? Uh, don't come up with something like, okay, I'm going to learn 10 new words from this clip today. No, it's too much. Focus on one specific skill. If it's vocabulary, focus on two or three words, tops, and that's it. Remember, it's the quality of your study time and the frequency. Much better than trying to do too much and for a very long time, but maybe just once a week or twice a week. Much better to do it consistently every day, just a little bit, than the other way around. Okay? So now that I have uh, discussed some of the mindset here, I want to explain to you now, I want to go over the exact step-by-step -step process that I employed myself when I was using movies and TV series more actively to improve my English. The first point here is look at the scene that you have there in front of you from above. I like to call it this way. Look at the scene from above, meaning that it's always a good idea for you to watch the clip first just to get a general understanding or a general sense of the context. Imagine you have a five-minute clip to work with. Watch the five minutes first just to understand the context better. What is going on here? What is the main situation? How many people are in this scene? Are there in this scene? How many characters? Who are these characters? Okay? Just to have a general feel, a general sense. Okay? Just to give you an example. In this clip, I can see that there is a lawyer defending his client in a court. That's it. All right? Or in this scene here, I can see that there, there is a person doing a job interview. The person is in a room with a potential boss or interviewer, and there is an interview happening. After you watch the clip for the first time, just to get a better feel for the context, then we move on to the next step, which in my case was always learning the pronunciation of certain words, certain phrases, focusing on some sounds that I heard from that clip. So you can choose to focus on one specific sound that catches your attention, for example, or one specific word, how that word is pronounced in the clip, or even a whole phrase, how that whole phrase is pronounced. Once you identify that word, that sound, that phrase, listen and repeat multiple times, okay? Play it back and forth, we say. Play that clip back and forth. If it is one, fra one phrase, 
play that phrase back and forth over and over again and listening and repeating. Actively repeat what you hear. Be like a parrot, you know, that bird that pirates usually have in the movies, you know, the green uh, bird that imitates everybody, you know? So be like that, okay? Imitate what you hear. Not just the pronunciation, the sound itself, but also the emotion, the tone, the feel. Imagine you are the actor at that moment, okay? And then you keep doing that until you feel like you got the right sound. After you've done that for uh, a few times and you feel, okay, I think I got enough practice here with this, you can move on, okay? Just to give you one example, uh, last night, to be exact, I was watching a movie with my wife and my son. My son is a teenager now. And uh, one of the things we love to do with him is... Uh, watch old movies. By old, I mean movies that I grew up with, you know, movies from the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, you know, because um, I want him to grow up also knowing, you know, these movies and maybe TV series that I grew up with, that my wife grew up with, you know, because uh, I don't want him to just watch stuff that is coming out nowadays. You know, I want him to get to know stuff that was released 10, 20, 30 years ago, okay? So as a habit, we usually do this. You know, we tend to uh, watch old movies with him, and it's a great family moment that we have together. So last night, we were watching this movie with Keanu Reeves called Speed. Speed. You know, it's from 1994, to be exact, and it's a great action movie. It's action-packed, you know, from the minute the movie begins all the way to the end, there's no rest. You know, there's always something going on. You're always on the edge of your seat because, you know, it's so engaging and dynamic and exciting. You know, it's a great movie. If you haven't seen this movie yet, watch it. It's a great two hours that you're going to spend there, okay? So the name is Speed, 1994 with Keanu Reeves, all right? It's about a bus. That's all, I, that's all I'm going to say. It's about a bus, Okay. So, as we were watching this clip last night, there is this scene where uh, Keanu Reeves' character, he's a police officer in the movie, he's a cop, he gets on the bus and he says to the passengers, there's something along these lines, everybody calm down, I'm a cop. I'm not sure now if the, those were the exact words, but something along these lines he says, okay? So imagine you are watching that movie. You can actually... Imitate that line, imagining you are him, you know? Something like, everybody, calm down, I'm a cop. And you can also play with different uh, intonations. Everybody, calm down, I'm a cop. You see? So this is a great way for you to practice speaking and pronunciation by yourself with a movie or TV series. All right? And don't be embarrassed by it. I mean, have fun with it. That's the point. You might be thinking now, oh, Chago, but this is kind of silly. I'm going to look stupid. Well, maybe that's kind of the point, you know. But remember, you are practicing. Much better for you to practice by yourself when nobody's watching or maybe just, you know, people you trust are watching, you know, than, you know, having that feeling of insecurity all the time when you go out there and you have to talk to people. Practice before at home. With a movie clip, for example, don't be ashamed to do that. That's how you improve, actually. Okay? So, after you've gone through this process of focusing on the pronunciation of some sentences, some sounds, you can move on to the next step of the method here, which is to check the meaning. The meaning of specific vocabulary that catches your attention. Okay? Um, Going back to this example that I just uh, shared, right? Uh, the Keanu Reeves movie, Speed. He says, everybody calm down. I'm a cop. You, you could focus, for example, on calm down. Okay, calm down. What's the meaning of that phrasal verb? What does that mean? Well, it means to relax. Relax. Everybody relax. I'm a cop. Okay? So, uh, 
you could take notes of the, of the piece of vocabulary you are focusing on, and then you can look it up in an English to English dictionary. You can go to Google and you can type in calm down meaning. You're going to have the definition there. Or nowadays, you can even use an AI tool like ChatGPT, Microsoft Bing, or Google Gemini to look up the meaning of that word, of that expression. Okay? And many times, you don't even have to check the meaning on ChatGPT or on a dictionary. Simply by looking at the word or expression in that context might be enough. Going back to this movie I was watching with my son last night, uh, there was this scene in the movie where one of the characters says puke, the word puke, okay? And my son didn't know this word. But watching the scene, because, oh, by the way, I forgot to share this with you. We watch that in English with him, okay? So we usually watch the movies with him with the um, audio in English and the subtitles in English too, okay? So he didn't know the word puke. But by the context, he asked me, so puke means to vomit, right? And then I say, yeah, that's correct. You see? So to puke means to vomit or to throw up. But he didn't have to check that word in a dictionary or on chat GPT, you know? Simply by looking at the context, he already got the meaning. He just confirmed or double-checked with me, who was sitting next to him. Okay, so sometimes, yes, you are going to have to check in a dictionary or with an AI tool the actual meaning of the piece of vocabulary you're working on, but not always. Sometimes just watching the clip is enough for you to understand the word, okay? And again, that's why you should be using more and more movies and TV series in your study routine because you will be improving your vocabulary considerably, both actively and even passively, okay? So after you've gone through this uh, step, okay, of... Um, going through the pronunciation of certain sections, checking the vocabulary, some words, some expressions, you can contextualize the piece of vocabulary or the phrase. To contextualize means to better understand the context. So reflect, okay, I can see this phrase here. Everybody calm down, I'm a cop. Okay, what is going on here? Who is saying this phrase? Why is this person saying this phrase? How are people in the scene, maybe the passengers on the bus, feeling right now? You see, so simply by observing the scene and reflecting like this with these questions, you will better understand the context. Okay? Um, that reminds me of... One time, when I was watching a TV series called Smallville, you know, Smallville is a great TV show. It tells the story of Superman, you know, Clark Kent, but when he was a teenager in Smallville, living in Smallville, yeah? So it focuses on his teenage years. I mean, can you imagine Clark Kent with all those superpowers in high school? I mean, what would that look like? That's the main premise of the show. It's a great show. To be honest with you guys, that was actually the very first TV series that I used in my life to learn English with. You know, most teachers out there or people who speak English, who learn English, they say that Friends was the TV series for them. It wasn't Friends for me. It was Smallville. Of course, I watched Friends later, many years later, of course, but... Uh, it wasn't the first. My very first TV series that I used was Smallville. It's a great TV series to learn English with, all right? But anyway, I remember that I was watching the first episode, I believe, and uh, there is this scene where his stepfather walks into the room and he says to Clark, his son, afternoon, sleepyhead. He says this, afternoon, sleepyhead. And simply by looking at the context, I understood 
what Sleepy had meant. Because before that scene, Clark, remember, he's a teenager. He has just woken up to go to school. He woke up apparently late. Okay. And then his father comes in and says, afternoon, sleepyhead. So I thought, okay, based on this context, I can understand that sleepyhead is a funny, casual expression, a word you can use to call someone who maybe is a little bit lazy and sleeps too much or sleeps until late. Okay. Simply by observing the context, I got that. And then the next step of contextualizing, I would say, is imagine a real situation that could happen in your life that would allow you to use the word or expression from the clip. So talking about sleepyhead, I could imagine something like, okay, how could I use this in my life? Well, imagine I go out with a friend of mine for a few drinks and we have a great time, we spend the night out, and then when we, we and then we come back home. The next day, I wake up a little bit early, but my friend is still sleeping in. And then at midday, at noon, my friend finally gets up. Well, in that context, in that situation, I could say, afternoon, sleepyhead, how'd you sleep? We have fun last night, right? You see? So... This is also part of contextualizing, not only understanding the context of the scene, but once you do that, imagine an imaginary, excuse me, imagine an imaginary scenario that could happen in your life and imagine yourself using that expression in that situation. Okay, this is contextualizing it for you. All right. So that's it. These are the steps. So just to recap, we have the mindset. Always extract at least one thing every time you sit down to watch something in English. Focus on quality and frequency, consistency, not quantity. So work with short clips. Remember, you are not watching for fun here. You are watching to study. So just work with short clips, all right? The first step is look at the scene from above. Watch the scene one time to get a better idea of the context. Step two, learn the pronunciation of certain language there that catches your attention. Play back, listen, repeat, okay? Then step three, check the meaning of words that you like. You can use an English to English dictionary for that. You can use Google. You can use ChatGPT or any other AI tool. And remember, sometimes you might not even need to check that. And finally, contextualize. Better analyze the context of the scene and imagine a, a situation in your life that could happen that would allow you to use that language, that expression, for example. Okay? So now I want to practice this with you a little bit, I want to go over here some possible scenes, okay, from movies or TV series. So I have here five imaginary scenes, and let's try to implement this method step by step here, okay? Scene one, I'm going to read it for you and uh, try to picture this scene with me. Imagine you are watching something, and this is the scene. People are sitting at a table eating dinner. One person gets up, picks up a bowl of salad, and asks, Who wants more salad? Then, one of the people sitting lifts up his plate and says, Hit me. Hmm. Hit me. So remember, the first step here is the pronunciation, right? So you could play back that part and listen and repeat. Hit me, hit me, hit me. Try to imitate the, the same way you heard the actor saying that. Okay, after you've done that for a while, you move on to the next step, which is the meaning. Okay, hit me, 
if we look at the context here, it's easy to understand that hit me here means I want more salad. Give it to me. Because remember, one person asks, who wants more salad? And, they, and then the other person says, hit me. In other words, me, I want more. Give, give me more. Okay? And if you are still not sure, you can double check that. Just to give an example, I use ChatGPT here. And what I did was I went to ChatGPT and I wrote the same situation here exactly that I just described to you about people eating at the dinner table. And then at the end, I asked, what does hit me mean in this context? This is what ChatGPT replied. Check it out. In this context, hit me is a casual and colloquial way of saying, yes, please, or I would like some more. It's a playful and informal way of indicating that the person wants more salad added to their plate. The phrase hit me is often used idiomatically in informal situations to express a desire for something to be given or served to them. You see how cool? So just go there, write the situation that you saw in the clip, and ask the tool to define a certain word or expression based on that context, and you will get a result. Just remember that with AI tools like ChatGPT, Microsoft Bing, or Google Gemini, the key is to be specific. The more specific you are in your prompts, the better results you will get. Remember this, all right? Let's move on here to the next step, which is contextualizing. Okay, now we got the sound, hit me, hit me. We got the meaning. Now let's contextualize. Imagine you're having dinner with your family and somebody asks you if you want more lasagna, for example. You can say, yeah, hit me in this situation, okay? You see, so we have just gone through the steps. Pronunciation, meaning, contextualization. We're contextualizing the scene. Okay? Scene two, let me read it for you. A woman stands up, picks up her bag, and says, I better get going. Okay, first, let's focus on the pronunciation. Let's listen and repeat that part as many times as possible. And actively imitate. I better get going. I better get going. I'd better get going. Okay, done. Now let's move on to the meaning. Well, based on the context, we understand that I better get going means I have to go. I have to go. I have to leave. Okay? And now let's contextualize. Imagine you are leaving a party and you say goodbye to the people there. Guys, I better get going. Bye-bye. I had fun. You see? Scene three. Listen. You see two people competing in a car race. Before the race starts, one of them looks at the opponent and says, I'm going to kick your ass. Or, I'm going to kick your ass. Okay. I'm going to kick your ass. Let's focus on the pronunciation here. I'm going to kick your ass. I'm going to kick your ass. Or depending on the actor, you might hear I'm going to. I've already explained that in a past episode about the future tenses. If you haven't listened to that one or watched that, I'm going to leave the card here somewhere for you to check out. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to kick your ass. I'm going to kick your ass or I'm going to kick your ass. All right. That's the pronunciation, listening and repeating, listening and repeating. Now, what about the meaning? Well, based on the context, we understand that I'm going to kick your ass means I'm going to win. I'm going to defeat you. Okay? Remember, you can understand that just by looking at the context, or you can double check that. You can go to Google and type in, I'm going to kick your ass meaning. You will have it. Or go to ChatGPT or any other AI tool. What about the, the context? Let's contextualize. Imagine you're playing a game against a friend and you want to provoke him a little bit. 
you are playing a game, and then you can go, okay, I'm going to kick your ass. Get ready. You see? Let's move on to the next scene here. Scene four. A man goes to many stores looking for stamps. None of the stores have stamps. After a whole day looking for them, this man comes back home frustrated. His wife asks him, so could you get the stamps? Then he replies, nope. Apparently, they are very hard to come by around here. Hmm, very hard to come by. Focus on the pronunciation first. They are very hard to come by around here. They are very hard to come by around here. Come by. Come by. Very hard to come by. Okay, what about the meaning? Based on the context, we understand that hard to come by means it's difficult to find or difficult to buy. So apparently stamps are difficult to find in this city around here. They are hard to come by. What about the context? Imagine you spend a whole day looking for a rare classic album to buy, but you cannot find it in any store. When you come back home, you can tell your friend or your wife, whoever lives with you, I couldn't find the album. It's really hard to come by. You see, it's really hard to find it. And finally, scene five. Listen, two friends are talking. One of them shows the other the new video game he just bought. Then he says, check it out, while handing the game to his friend. So first, remember, let's focus on the pronunciation. Play it back, over and over again. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Now let's go to the meaning. Based on the context, we understand that check it out means look. So when you want somebody to look at something you are showing, you can say, check it out. Here, check it out. Take a look. Now let's contextualize. Imagine you're showing your new laptop to your friend. Maybe you bought a new laptop. You are super excited about it. You are thrilled about it. And then you invite your friend over to see it, you can say, hey, here's my new laptop. Check it out. All right? So guys, the main takeaway I want you to have for this episode is the difference between the active approach and the passive approach when working with movies and TV series. It's okay to consume them passively for fun. I do, I do this all the time. But if you want to really level up your English, don't just consume movies and TV series passively. Be more intentional, be more active, more deliberate in your approach. Use these steps that I presented to you today, and I'm sure you will be uh, amazed at the results you will see in your English vocabulary, your English listening, and even pronunciation skills, all right? Also, try to employ this active approach with videos, movies, and TV series more often during the week. Ideally, I recommend you do this daily. Do it every day, even for five minutes only, five, 10, or 15 minutes, but do that every day. If it's not possible every day, as many times as possible during the week, okay? You know, um, I've, I've taught in language schools a lot in my life. Uh, nowadays, I don't, do this in, I, don't, I don't do this anymore. I teach mainly privately online, and I also create content for the internet, as you know. But back when I was a teacher in language schools, guys, sometimes I would have a classroom of 10, 15, 20 people. And, you know, in, it, it never failed. The best students in the class were always the ones who had the habit of watching movies and TV series in English regularly, period. The students who had this habit of watching movies and TV series in English regularly, they usually performed better in class. They usually had better English. And it's no surprise why that is. So reflect. I mean, are you spending enough time 
watching movies and TV series in English during the week? Or is it just something sporadic that you do from time to time, maybe once a week on the weekend, maybe once or twice a month? And when you watch it, you don't even watch it with this active approach. You just watch it passively. And maybe you don't even watch it in English. Maybe you watch it in your native language, dubbed, which is even worse, right? So think about it. Reflect on this. And I guarantee that if you implement movies and TV series into your study routine more seriously and more intentionally like this, like the way I'm proposing here, you will see amazing results in your English learning development. All right? Guys, that's all I have to share with you today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you found it useful. If you are interested in having private classes with me, I still have a little bit of time available during the week to teach some private classes. So the link to that is in the show notes here on Spotify or Apple. If you are on YouTube, you can find the link in the description of this video and also as a pinned comment below. It's a page with the information. So Go to the page, watch the video there, read all the information, everything is detailed, everything you need to know about how my private classes work, how much it costs is there. And then after reading everything with attention and understanding, if it makes sense, you can apply. And then I'll see if it is possible to take you for a private class, okay? And also subscribe to the channel here on YouTube if you are new here. and. Share this video with people you know who are interested in learning English, who want to level up their English and become more advanced, all right? And let me know here in the comment section what you thought about this method, about today's episode. Do you already do this? What are your favorite TV series to, to watch and to work with, all right? I want to know your thoughts on this topic, on this subject, and I'll be talking to you guys very, very soon. Thanks again for listening until now, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.